Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you a diorama I recently did for my father. He just uh, bought a sailboat and it was his birthday so I thought I'd make him a diorama. This is my first diorama and I felt like I, I learned a lot from the experience so I thought I'd just share the process I went through in making this diorama here which I am proud of even though there are some things I know in the future I will be able to do better. So here are the different components of my diorama. I'm using this acrylic case here which is I believe like a 10 by 8 by 5 inch acrylic case which I got from the container store. It's only like 13 bucks which is pretty cheap for a for a display acrylic case. And then I'm just going to be using pink insulation foam as kind of my backdrop for my hill. And then I'm going to be using some two-part epoxy resin, some plaster molds here from Woodland Scenics to have this kind of shoreline with a rugged cliff face and sailboat going by it. Um, that's at least kind of what I was visualizing. Uh, my dad has a certain lake that he likes to sail on and it has this really rugged limestone cliffs. So I wanted to make sure that I had that incorporated into my diorama. It's not that deep, so the boat's going to be pretty close to shore. Maybe not all that realistic, but that's all right. So first things first, after I kind of glued on some insulation, I'm just going to cut away at it. The idea is I'm going to have like this quick slope coming off the cliff. Then I'm going to have kind of a little beach area, a little inlet um, with, uh, you know, kind of sand and rocks and whatnot. So just taking a, a sharp knife, cutting away at the foam. You know, if you've done any wargaming terrain, you've spent many uh, many an hours chiseling away at foam, and uh, and that's what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of I'm just kind of uh, winging it, really. I have a really basic idea of what I want the end product to look like, and I'm just carving foam. It's it's perhaps my least favorite thing to do in this hobby. I gotta admit, I really do not like carving insulation foam, but at least this is just a small little piece here, so it took no time at all, which was uh was a nice change of pace and didn't spend hours carving that with a knife and making a mess. And then after I was happy with the the shape, the overall shape of polystyrene, I just went over it with some sandpaper just to sand it down. Uh, just to make sure I don't have any coarse, jagged edges from where I was cutting. And then I'm going to use a technique I've been using in my last few videos, which is covering the polystyrene in some homemade plaster cloth using here, as you'll see, some uh, paper towel mixed with plaster. And then you, I just cover it over the entirety of the polystyrene here. It adds a bit of durability to it. It also kind of has a little subtle undulations, so the ground doesn't look completely even, which I think helps with the realistic look and also it helps me attach the plaster helps me attach that uh that molded cliff face that i that i used um and it, that's just a woodland scenics mold i just filled it with regular plaster i don't use hydrocal i just use the cheap stuff and uh and the plaster cloth is a really good way to adhere that to your surface you wrap it around there and it won't be going anywhere and i'm also kind of uh, wrapping it around the back of the polystyrene too uh, I want to, I want to kind of look like there's like striations in the ground because I'm going to dry brush the back side of it, the dirt side. So you can see kind of different, uh, different striations of the geometry. And after that's all done, after the plaster cloth has dried, I'm just going to add some sand here, some grit. Um, I'm adding kind of coarse sand all around it. And then after I have a layer of the coarse sand down, I'm going to lay some finer stuff down, uh, for the beachhead. And now I got to deal with what's going to be, I guess, the water layer for my resin. So I'm just going to take the bottom of my acrylic case here and I'm going to spray it with some of that Vallejo black airbrush primer. It's going to take several coats because, you know, spl spraying anything on, uh, on plastic, especially clear plastic like this, it, it, it doesn't have very good coverage. So it took quite a few, uh, passes, but finally I got a solid, solid black base coat. And then I'm going to go over it with a nice dark coat of Vallejo Germanic Black Brown. That's going to kind of be like my dark, deep water color for this build. And so I'm just going to go and I'm just going to spray it, as you see here, all across the bottom, getting some nice coverage. If a little black shows through, that's fine too. Just look like a deeper area of the water. So now I'm just going to show you priming the sailboat. I'm not actually going to show how I painted it because it took forever. But I have a new respect for people that do model boats because, man, doing the rigging and finding the right material for the sails was a arduous process. It took forever. So, again, props to people that do this for their hobby. It is not easy. 
And so now I'm just going to prime the rest of my, I guess, cliff face here. I'm making sure that I actually cover up the rocks because I want to leave those white. I'm going to do kind of a special technique here in a moment. So now that the rest of it is primed, I'm going to do what's called the Woodland Scenics Leopard Spotting Technique. So I'm basically going to take a bunch of paints, just craft paints, and water them down significantly and just kind of line them across the rock. Uh, in almost these stripes like this. So I think I'm using three different colors. I'm using a dark gray, a light gray, and then a yellow. Um, looking at limestone, I often see that there is a yellow hue to the, to the rock. So I'm going to be using this dark yellow color over about a third of the rock face. And again, you're going to want to water this down quite a bit. The idea here is that the kind of wash will run into the nooks and crannies of the cliff face. But the parts that are jutting out, the parts that you would naturally highlight, won't accept as much paint. So by doing this technique, you'll actually uh, kind of naturally give it highlights and lowlights. We're going to kind of accentuate those in later steps. But you can get a pretty good look to your rock face with little effort doing this. So this doesn't quite look natural right here. You know, the hues of the grays and the yellows are pretty bright. So the next step is to go over your cliff face after your previous layer has dried with a black wash. And you want to water this down even more than the previous layer. You're just going to put this over the entirety of cliff face. All right. And in fact, I'll do several layers. So I'll put kind of that down this black wash over the entirety. And then I'll go back over with more of the wash in just the nooks and crannies or the places that I know will be in shadow. So after I put the black down, I'll let it dry once again. And then I'm going to go over places I know that are jutting out with some buff titanium, kind of this off-white color. And I'm making sure that there's nearly no paint on the brush, only just a, a small amount, and going over all of the cliff face. And this is where I think the rock really gets a realistic look. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just dry brush the what will be the earth or the ground. Really quickly, I'm going to do a little mid-tone brown here over the espresso brown that I spray painted onto uh, the cliff face originally. And then I'm just going to do a high highlight of buff titanium over the entirety as well. And that will give us a nice kind of uh, low light highlight look to the earth. I will not, I won't have all that much of the earth showing. I'm going to flock it quite heavily, but there will be some places where it will show through. So I do want to make sure I go through the highlighting process. And here I'm just going to give a base color to what will be the beach. All right, I'm just going to put down some gray there, do a little bit of dry brushing with some buff titanium, but I'm actually going to be pouring on real sand, some real kind of volcanic ash, really fine sand onto this area. Uh, but anywhere that I, the sand doesn't completely cover, I want there to be kind of a gray tone. And so now it is time to flock my, uh, my cliff side here. And so first I'm just going to be using four millimeter grass. I'm not going with the longer six millimeter stuff because I, this is kind of a smaller scale. I think it would look a little unnatural if I put the longer six millimeter stuff down here. So I'm going with kind of a mix of an autumn and summer blend and I'm just lining kind of the back portion of the cliff face of the, this, I guess, uh, lakeside area, uh, thinking that that will be where kind of thicker vegetation is. And then up near the forefront of the diorama, I'm going to put some two millimeter stuff. And again, kind of a autumn, autumn summer blend, some uh, darker, darker greens mixed with a kind of almost a, almost a straight yellow static grass. And uh, that will give a, a nice summer look to our diorama. It's always important to think of what season you're trying to depict whenever you're doing static grass because you don't want to mix Grass is from like autumn with a, with a very light green. It won't look right. And so now I'm going to put down some coarse turf over the static grass. If you've seen any of my recent videos, whenever I'm putting down static grass, I love adding this. Uh, it gives kind of a different silhouette, a little rounded look to your grass, looking like little shrubs, weeds, that sort of thing. I think it helps with the realism. And so I'm using the light green variety from Woodland Scenics and I'll put just a small amount of the darker medium green in there and then I'm going to go ahead and spray it down with my scenic glue, which is just Mod Podge and water. And then I'm going to put down some fine turf and I'm going to use the earth blend. I'm also going to use some burnt grass and then I'm going to use this uh, Gale Force 9 stuff that's uh, like almost um, yellow meadow flowers. And then I'm going to add just a few trees 
after all my flocking has dried. And I'm going to make them like how I, if you've seen a recent video of me making uh, realistic looking trees from uh, natural materials. Uh, so here is just like a dried bouquet that you can get from a hobby or craft store. And I'm just going to, I spray painted it brown and then I just added a little bit of spray adhesive and I'm adding some coarse turf to it. All right. You don't have to add anything else. In my other video, I covered these, these fronds in, uh, in polyfiber. Uh, these, this is very small scale. So here you go. You can just put it straight onto the, the branches and you'll get a pretty realistic look. And then I'm just going to highlight this tree here with some burnt grass, some light green, all right, to show off where the light is hitting it. And there you go. You got yourself a small little tree. Then we just need to add it to our diorama. So I'm just using a hand drill, drilling into the foam, using a little glue at the bottom, super glue at the bottom of it, and adhering it like this. So I'm going to add several of these little trees to this diorama, as well as some light green saplings by Woodland Scenic. So here you can see trees that I've added and now I'm just going to pour some really fine sand over that beach area and if you notice I've also added my cliff face here into my acrylic box which will add a whole new layer of difficulty as I try not to smudge it up or scuff it up but if you do get any paint or glue or anything on your case just use a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol and it'll rub it right off and you won't scratch your acrylic case. So you see here, I've actually taken my airbrush and sprayed some gray right along the base of the cliff face. And I also sprayed some uh, green ochre along the, I guess, the shoreline over there. Then I blended it over back with the Germanic black brown. And that'll just look nice when we pour our resin, give a nice gradation of color going from deep to the shallows. So here I'm pouring my resin here, and you won't be able to see it really, but I also poured all over my case which was a uh, kind of a nightmare to get off. I had to go over it many times with isopropyl alcohol. I did finally get it off. Just make sure you don't uh, mess up your case at that moment. And so now to make the waves, I'm first going to go over it here with just Mod Podge to kind of make your basic waves. All right, I, I, I'm not very happy with how my waves turn out. I don't know, you can be a judge of it when you see it. I don't think they look as realistic as they maybe could have. Um, I've never made these kind of waves before, but anyways, so my process here was I put down a ton of Mod Podge and then I, as you can see, I'm taking my brush. I'm kind of drawing them into these little waves. So you can see there's kind of three separate lines of waves and then like a kind of a shallows air area. So I'm just taking my brush. I'm kind of removing some of the Mod Podge, scraping it up into kind of a, almost a mound to kind of simulate the peaks and valleys of waves. And this part, I think turned out okay, to be honest. Um, it was the next part here, and uh, here's me just giving you a view of the sailboat that I worked so hard on. I, I think it turned out pretty well. The sails look a little crinkled, but, you know, those were a real pain. Um, but my next step will be to kind of add white heads to the tops of the waves, the crest cresting part. And so what I'm going to use is Woodland Scenic's water effects, that stuff that I swore I wouldn't use after making my pond. Uh, I didn't like it on my pond because it kind of looked like there's rapids on still water, which wasn't ideal. So I thought, well, I could use it for these white heads, these caps of these waves, and it would kind of look all right. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, I still really didn't like how they turned out. I think I might use like successive layers of acrylic gel medium and kind of form the waves that way. I don't know. I, I just really wasn't happy with how they turned out. But I'm basically just going to take this and stipple it on those areas, which you can still see in the Mod Podge. It's not completely dry. I'm kind of running on a time crunch here. Uh, so I'm just putting those on on those kind of thick areas of Mod Podge where I want the tops of the waves to be, stippling it on there, and then I let it dry over the course of a night. And now I'm going to dry brush over the waves which with a mixture of some straight white and some light blue, just a very little light blue in there. Now I can't really blame the water effects for this. I think I went a little too heavy on the dry brushing i think it turned out a little white uh but anyway so if i do it again I'll, I'll go a little easier on that but i still just wasn't really happy with the shapes they didn't really have like like a crescent crashing look to them they kind of just look like spiky bits hanging out in the water but from a distance at least they look all right but just something to improve upon next time i think i'm going to try some acrylic gel uh we'll see how that turns out I, i've seen some people use it to great effect all right and now i'm just going to put some gloss varnish over it 
to make it really pop, let there be some reflection on the water. It'll also make my waves look a little bit better as lights bouncing off it. You won't notice perhaps that uh, I went a little too overzealous with the white on the waves. And so here is the final version. I put a little, some HO scale guys on the boat, one guy on the cliff, and I am happy with it. And my dad was kind of blown away with it and he's putting it on his mantle. So I was really happy to see how enthused he was to receive this. And overall it was a, it was, it's hard, man. Making dioramas is very time consuming. Even small ones like these, I was just amazed at how much time it took, but I think I'll be making more in the future. I already have some other family members requesting it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did like subscribe, and I'll be back soon with some more terrain for you guys. Take care.